what's funny is like, I can't even remember in my brain where mm. I got this from, but I mm. totally just like went, I did the same thing. Like mm. I went. Welcome to How I Make, a series that gives you an insight into makers, the tools they use, and a behind the scenes look into their products. Hey Corey, how's it going? Hey Andrew, it's, uh, it's going well, how are you? Good, thank you. Good to see you, first of all. Good to see you. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, it's cool to, you know, I know, like, I see you on Twitter and mm. some of the other chats we're in, so it's cool to, like, now we're actually talking. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's really good. All, I like it. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, if anything, this is uh, for myself, you know, to connect, to force myself to connect with people. And, you know, if we delve into the products and other people find it useful, then that's, that's great, too. Cool. Um, you're in San Diego? That's correct, yeah. Uh, born and bred? No, I'm from California, Northern California, but okay. I've been here for about 10 years now, so it's basically home. Okay, nice. So we're eight hours behind. So for me, it's, it's quarter past seven now, quarter past 10 in the morning for you, right? That's correct. Yeah. Where are you located? I'm in Southern Spain. That's right. Okay. It's a very long name. It's called La Linea de la Concepcion. <laughs> <laughs> They didn't want to shorten it. I think most people say La Linea, and then that's fine. <laughs> cool. So let's get started. Right. So uh, let's expose you. Right. So um, please show us what is on your desktop. What does that look like? So share your screen with us. Sure. We'll Let me. Uh, silly thing is, I don't actually know how to do that. Share. There we go. Yeah. Should be right. You see it? There we go. Okay. That's my desktop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's boring. So another, another very clean. No, that's that's great. So uh, we have a clean desktop here. Um, yeah. I actually. Office. So this is yeah. This is Mac, and I I run. Um, there's this like old app called Camouflage. Okay. So th my desktop actually has icons, right. um, but it's all just like there's no sense. I don't know that whole mess of just like get rid of all these icons is messy. So yeah. yeah. I just prefer it to be clean. And then if you double click on the desktop, which is cool with camouflage, it opens up a finder window. And then you're like, so I just always double click on the desktop. To open I think I'm going to use that because on my desktop, I find that I start, you know, clearing out things and I always kind of put them there quickly when I'm just working on some quick stuff. So I think that was the solution for me. Cool. Yeah. It's, I've, I've been using that for a long time. Um, and, and the other thing too is like screenshots. So like, you know, some, like some people have those go right to your desktop and that can mm -hmm. get really messy. So yeah. I've got a folder for all my screenshots. Um, but anyways, yeah, right. that's, uh, <laughs> that's actually the desktop setup. Excellent. Um, okay. Let's go right into tools. So describe some of the tools that you use on a daily basis. Um, and maybe a little bit about your, your flow of work. So what does that look like? Sure. Okay. So, um, yeah, actually, I guess that's kind of how my tool, uh, what's this called on Mac, the toolbar here on is kind of set up. Yeah. Um, so it's like, obviously I'm in Chrome all the time doing like either development yep. here. I actually have, so like over here, I have like a window open. That's like, I, I have my, uh, Mac book over here on this side. And then here I'm looking at my, uh, like external monitor. So this is tweet so. back. Yeah, so I have TweetDeck open, uh, mm -hmm. kind of a distraction. I usually close it, but if I'm yeah. just like out, it's just a way to like kind of see what's going on. And then yeah. I, like you can see, see here, I've got like, uh, like if I, my notifications, I like to pay attention to see if people are talking about Blurt. Yeah. Uh, just so I can be involved in the conversations and a bunch of other stuff on there. So, um, and then obviously you can't go wrong with Spotify. So Spotify is over there. Always mm -hmm. listening to music. What are you listening to right now? Um, I'm really hooked on Bay Ledges. I don't know if you're familiar. I am not, no. What kind of, what type of music is that? Uh, that's a good question. Oh, how what to classify, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's like indie pop, I guess you would call it. Okay, easy, easy listening, would you say? Easy, yeah, exactly. I, okay. Like, I basically listen to, uh, I don't really like lyrics, so it's, you know, like anything. Oh, electric. same, same, yeah. same. So I can't really listen to words while it's done working because my brain yep. will just focus on those words and i'm like whoa i'm gone right so yep. same thing or all i mean the other thing like taiko like are you familiar with taiko i am uh, yeah. okay like yeah. that's it's kind of weird but i was reading a thing the other day it says like listening to songs you know really well actually helps you get more into that zone so it's like true. and a lot of repetitiveness I, as well which is weird but yeah. it, it works 
yeah so like that's like if you ever see me on spotify listening to psycho i'm like in the zone <laughs> <laughs> good <laughs> so anyways okay so that's kind of like just the general setup and then there's like chrome yeah uh, let me see here i kind of have my uh whoops wrong tab uh i was kind of trying to prepare a little bit for this so um i pin tabs so like it's kind of like my workflow really it's like okay. i have like my calendar uh -huh. um I'm big on Notion and this is like what I call the command center. So this is okay. like how I've set, set up Notion for like my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm work, working on these product things. I got freelancing I do, uh, okay. other projects I work on, personal stuff. Anyways, this is this crazy like command center that it comes to yes. all the time. Yes, uh, Trello is where I kind of manage projects with clients and my own personal stuff. Yeah. Google Analytics. So this is all just like distracting stuff. I've got yeah. digital. So. Uh, bare metrics. Bare metrics, okay, cool. Dashboard, um, DigitalOcean. Yeah. Uh, whoops, there's there's an IP address, but that's fine. And then okay. I do like keywordy, uh, keyword research stuff. So these are just like Drift is another thing I'm always in. So okay. obviously you can see here, these are all the app like web apps that I'm like constantly in. Okay. Uh, all the time. Cool. So this is what you use. These are your tools. I I see a lot of people use um, Notion quite a bit and. Um, I'm really envious of the of the uh, product market fit because it, it seems as if most people are doing the marketing for them. Uh. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I mean, I've I've used I've been around a while and I've used mm. a lot of the like you know I've tried just like Apple's Notes. I've mm. tried like a physical notebook. I've tried yep. every every app that's been out there for to do lists and all these things, mm. uh, but. I don't know, man. They figured it out. It's like okay. they have all the little things. Now it's there's still some like rough edges, but the fact yeah. that I can do everything in it, it just makes yeah. life. So that, that I mean that the cohesion that attracts me to it. I I yeah. was just initially scared because I'm quite minimal in you know uh, kind of accepting new things. Yeah. Um, it scared me a bit in the, the setup of it. Um, so I'm I'm always attracted to so, it. Um, I might give it yeah. another go. So honestly, I had a hard time with it as well at okay. first. Um, but when I built my own dashboard, so like they don't do this for you. You have to go and yeah. like set it up. And yeah. like there's, I so there's actually this whole underworld I discover of like YouTube uh, under, so like, under underworld. Yeah. <laughs> it's something <laughs> ominous. <laughs> well, I mean, I couldn't believe. I mean, there's like people have YouTube channels devoted yeah. to Notion. Right. That's so crazy. I found some like yeah. I found some workflow or mm. like setups and then I just, you know, you know how I mean it's, that's like how I build things even. It's yeah. just like finding finding examples and making it your own. So like the bullet journal is like a new thing I'm trying of like how I organize every day. So okay. like I set up a, a bullet journal. So it's like what I'm like basically I duplicate this today thing every day and it's like an ongoing uh thing. Um, I never, I was doing like monthly projects, obviously mm -hmm. this, this is April, so I haven't even looked at it. Um, and then future logs, like just like long-term goals and like things that I'm trying to work on. And then I just keep a collection of them, like a history. That's what these are. Got it. Um, and then scratch pad, I won't open cause I put like keys and other weird things in there, but that's so, just literally like a place for me to just jot things down and I may never look yeah. at it again. It's, it's yeah. just kind of like that. And then notes are like literally every meeting I have with somebody or like, yeah. uh, stuff so i mean this is awesome right like it's cool is, and then like this, check is, this looks really good this is a good setup it's very looks very satisfying in the way you've organized it so i'm definitely uh, yeah attracted. yeah so I, I yeah i definitely recommend like try to set up like these this dashboard kind of look and then uh you know everybody's gonna have their own things that they care about but anyways this it's i now i have this in my pocket because you know they have a great mobile app so okay. this, this i do miss like having a physical notebook because i still use mm -hmm. that for, like sketching Catching yeah. things or whatever, but uh, this is, anyways, this has come in super handy for me. Excellent. Okay, then, so, yeah, go on. <laughs> sorry, yeah. No, and no, then, no. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and so I love Notion so much. It's funny, like, we went from like having desktop apps to the web, and now we're back to like these desktop apps. Yeah, it's slowly creeping back uh, in, isn't it? Yeah, I don't yeah. know why, uh, but there's something really nice if it's a well made application. Mm -hmm. It's, um, it's also um i don't know if it's if it's actual or not but there's um there's like less latency i find less less lag it's just a bit yeah. more, it's just a bit more i don't know it could be complete placebo but I'm, I'm really not sure for example figma i use figma using it uh in the cloud 
uh, is, 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 is one experience for me that then when I have it on the desktop is a different one. Although the desktop connects to the cloud too, so I'm not sure how accurate it is, but <laughs> it, it just feels, it just feels way yeah. better. Right, so. It might be. I don't know because you know Chrome has all the other like you have all your extensions and other things mm. in there. So I don't know. Yeah, you, it could be. And I think it's really too just like I mean this is something it's a criticism, a good one about Blurt. It's like mm. Blurt should be a, like if it's a distraction-free writing app. Yeah. The fact that it's on its own kind of helps you like mentally isolate that like mm -hmm. what you're doing. So. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, so and then the other thing I kind of like is like I use uh, Alfred. It's kind of like Quick Look. Um, if I hit alt space bar, it opens like mm -hmm. the search bar. So I can just type notion and it'll pop up. I nice. can't really, do, I can't do that if I'm, uh, in the browser, yes. it's harder to like switch to that tab. That's so that's kind of why, that's yeah. why I do that. Um, so. another thing I use too, I just thought about is like, I have this app called Divi, which I think this is something you can do on windows really easily. Oh, that's what I always said. Cause I'm, I'm from, I'm from window, from a windows area. I, I'm okay. on, Mac, I'm a complete no Mac now. And I always said that is what Windows does way better, which is the snapping, the window snapping. So. Yeah. And I, I used to work on Windows uh, projects and stuff. Mm -hmm. So that was like a feature I kind of liked. So anyways, I found this, um, it's like a, it's called Divi. It's been around a long time, but yeah, yeah it's got a couple, like if you want to make it full window, if you want to oh. center it on the screen. That's uh, useful. Yeah. Yeah. So I reckon that's, I, I guess I use that all the time. I don't really think about it, but it's kind of nice. Uh, for throwing things around great especially when you're co coding or doing design so yes. then uh, yeah so then that gets me into so that's these are more like i guess project management like trello is another one yep. i use all the time yeah and i just uh i use it more for like client projects so clients mm -hmm. know um you know what's going on they can just have a look and talk with me about things for blur it's like dead simple like i try not to get very messy it's just like Here's what I'm doing. Here's uh, yeah. yeah, ours pretty much looks the same for Anubo. Looks exactly the same as this in cool. so many ways. Yeah, very simple. But like the Kanban style. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, progress. So yeah. um, I definitely like for myself. I'm. It's funny, you know, when you work for clients, I feel like I actually do more effort <laughs> project it's, management it's, for them yeah. than for myself. It's, it's but, like you want to over deliver on the organizational sense, so that nothing is lost in translation, right? Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. exactly it. Yeah, I've I learned that the hard, that. hard way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I mean, when you when you don't ma manage things well for yourself, I mean, you you can get angry with yourself, whatever. But if it's a client, I mean, yeah, it's different. Right. And I think the other thing too is that I I think part of the reason too is like because I use my bullet my bullet journal to actually kind of like prioritize things more. So, anyways, uh, that's probably why I, I do it too because I have more of my notes and things in here. This is like this is the bullet journal for today, for example. Yeah. Um, yeah, just keeping track of everything's going on. Cool. Um, I just then, yeah. spotted that. I'm going to just point something out. Uh, it said just life wedding. Not Is that your wedding or? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just, no. just, otherwise, I was going to congratulate you. But <laughs> Oh, no. Uh, not yet. Although the pressure is going to be on, I'm sure, because uh, my girlfriend's uh, sister just got engaged. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not go into that. It's a different show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, so that's kind of more like, yeah, I was saying like project management. Yeah. Um, I have, I, as you know, like I love work in progress chat and mm -hmm. some of the other maker communities. So like telegram is like yeah. communication. Um, and I, I actually have a blurt chat room. The interesting oh. thing about the blurt chat room is that, um, it's not really so much for communication. Like we do chat in there, but I have notifications of when people hit their writing goals. So I feel like oh. that's half the reason a lot of us hang out in the chat room is just kind of oh. like, Hey, somebody hit their writing goal today. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. Nice. Um, and then, yeah, Slack. I mean, like, you know, like s different groups there. So, yeah. And I, I try to keep notifications off while I'm working just because, like, oh, yeah. Obviously, it's very distracting. So, of course. Um, I don't know what it's like for you when I see, I mean, how it is for you and maybe other people. And when I see a notification pop up, I have this feeling where I feel like I need to do something with it straight away. I might yeah. not, but there's this almost anxiety where I'm like, okay, let me just get to that. So I have to turn it off. I mean, how's it for you? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really bad. <laughs> okay. But like I will, yeah, I'm the same way. Like I'm easily distracted. So mm. I have to be very proactive about like what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, so like to-do lists, to-do lists are like at like the, the atomic thing of mm. like how I get things done. Like yeah. I have to like say, okay, right now for this time I'm doing this mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. 
turn off everything else because otherwise I'll just yeah I'll just go down the rabbit hole of yeah we've all been there I think <laughs> yeah like oh uh, notification on Twitter and the next thing you know you're reading some article oh god yeah fifty tabs open and yep. yeah <laughs> <laughs> two hours later how did I get here yeah 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 so yeah anyways and I still even even still I mean it's just it's so easy to get distracted on a computer when you're uh, zipping around so I I've contemplated getting those tools that like block social media or applications and things but part of me is like man i'm sure that works that's really heavy-handed but i just wish I, I need to build the responsibility yeah i'm i'm the same I'm, I'm a little bit hardcore if you will because i i feel like i need the discipline myself and right if i set this blocking thing up i can just deactivate it if i really want to so so right. for, for me it's i can't kind of imagine that it's blocked right so it, it yeah it man work. i think was it i think uh i want to say it was james clear but i don't remember exactly who mm. it was uh or maybe james clear wrote about it that somebody when he was writing a book he had um like his assistant change the passwords for his accounts so he couldn't oh, get into that oh okay <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> I don't that's have an really assistant, so, but that, that, yeah. that's, that's, that's good. See, that works because that's another person, right? And you have to go through right. them to get to, right. your, to get your fix. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, okay, so that's kind of like project management oh. communication. That's how it's like set up, you can see on the toolbar. It's kind of like, and obviously those chat things are further over, so hopefully they don't yeah. distract me too much. <laughs> yeah. um, cool. And, and I use reminders a lot. Um, with Siri, I'm always like, "Hey Siri, remind me tomorrow at nine to tweet this thing." You or, actually, you actually yeah. use Siri. Yeah, but that's okay. the only reason. That's the only thing I do. That's okay. like the only thing I use for Siri. Interesting. Is, Interesting. Hey, hey, remind remind me at eight tomorrow, or remind me when I get home to like take the garbage out. I don't know. Like, yeah, you know, just any kind of like reminders. Okay. Um, so they pop up a lot. Cool. So, and then, yeah, so then there's like uh, code. Yep. So I've got, this is a client project I'm working on. Uh, there's, I'm working on, well, so we'll just open up Blurt here. And I use, yeah, uh, Visual Studio uh, code. Yeah. So uh, I actually was using Atom for a long time. And then I like, maybe like, uh, I don't know. Well, I guess maybe it's been about seven or eight months now i've been using uh, code and really haven't looked back it's great okay cool let's let's use that as a segue into introducing what blurt is so, oh yeah yeah so go ahead sure um so blurt is a swiss army knife of writing tools to help you write better and hopefully more consistently um i can show you exactly what that looks like for those that aren't familiar, if I can find it. <laughs> um, you can find it at blurt.app, correct? Correct, yeah, blurt.app. Mm -hmm. um, here's kind of the Twitter page, because I'm, I'm working on, uh, so it's like still early, I feel like, for Blurt. So mm -hmm. like finding that product market fit, like taking what the customers like in the early days and all the feedback I'm getting and trying to like, ex uh, you know, like really highlight those features yeah. or like the values that people are having from it. And one big thing that everybody's really enjoying right now is how it kind of gamifies your writing habit. Um, yeah. So at first it was like, oh, Blurt's going to help you write better. But then quickly I realized like in order to become a better writer, you actually have to write a lot. Like yes. <laughs> you can't <laughs> yeah. just like a tool. I mean, maybe someday we have some like machine learning, crazy AI that just like sees what's in your brain and writes some prolific thing. I don't know. Yeah. But and then for the time being, we actually have to like practice writing. And so uh, by writing, writing more, you actually, you know, build the habit and yep. you'll become a better writer. So um, anyways, that's a big thing that people are, work, are really enjoying. So we can actually share what that looks like. Um, and actually maybe the landing page is a little better to look at. Um, so yeah, we've got- I've always liked, I've, I actually have, um, here's a confession, I have a, um, a bookmarked folder called landing page love right and where uh i i'm quite minimal in what i like to see and i like function over whatever how it looks i guess and yeah yours yours is in that so wow. I, I really like your language yeah <laughs> <laughs> amazing you know and what's funny is 
like I can't even remember in my brain where mm. I got this from, but I mm. totally just like went, I did the same thing. Like mm. I went to, like I, I think some of this is actually from the notion landing page, like the layout. Yeah. 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 Some of the copies. That's, that's, like, that's another one I like for, because it's, it, it, I mean, if you look at it, it's just, it's text on, on, on white, um, right. But it's, yeah. it's, for me, it's everything, you know, the, 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 the font, the spacing, the, the sizing. Um, and most importantly, can I quickly understand what you do, right? What it, yeah. because, because it's surprising how many sites you go to and that's not the case, right? Right, like, okay, right, for sure. I want to understand quickly what you do. So yours, your landing page definitely does that. Cool. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, yeah. And in my head, I mean, there's so many, a gajillion other things that I know I need to improve here. And I just, oh, God, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like, yeah, it's, I mean, yeah. Anyways, I think the landing page is really important. Like I really should go back and work on it. I just mm -hmm. haven't had the time. One yeah. big, one big learning I've had is like right now this landing page shows the features. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, I'm trying, like I knew, I knew I needed, basically what you need to do is like describe the value it has, not necessarily the features. Yeah. So, you, so tell a story, what is what you're saying? Yeah. A little more of the story. Yeah. I think when I first built this and this is like very common for founders and maker mm -hmm. types, like mm -hmm. because you know the product so well, it's almost like the curse of knowledge. You want to tell people like, this is what it does. Like look yes. at all these smart things that I yes. built and what it can do. Whereas people but, often don't care and they kind of want to see themselves and say it will. Sally is X and she does this and she writes, right. So kind of, like yeah. that they want to they want to see themselves within it in a way yep I think. yeah what is yeah yeah it's like what will this do for me in yeah. some sense like yeah. what what will what will what will i get out of this yeah kinda. so it's like and it's really from a high level so mm. anyways i almost feel that i've done a good job of like kind of showing all the things even still there's some missing but uh yeah, anyhow it's very clear yeah. and but i think you will always be your own most critic for your own for your own product right i mean i'm the same yep. You're exactly. always forever editing. It's never done. And I think that's, yep. that's just the founder's curse, right? <laughs> yep, exactly. Yeah. And, oh. and uh, anyway, so yeah. And then, and then just to touch on your note of like design, like obviously you can like go forever. And this was, I, I'm very fortunate that like minimal design is like popular now. Cause that's mm. always been like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like, I think that helps a lot too, right? Like people kind of come here and it's simple, which, yep. Well, it's kind of hard to do uh, well, but yeah, but uh, yeah. And I, when I first built this, I spent like a lot of time. I don't know, like at least over a week, just like oh, I can imagine <laughs> damaging myself. You know, like just like what, you, what you, know, you know, just driving myself crazy trying to get the yeah. exactly right and everything. So, anyways, yeah. um, and even still, it's not perfect. So, anyways, yeah. So, um, so yeah. So I like there's this auto ticks. I've been told this gif. This is, these are all gifts, and I've been told it goes a little too fast, even for some people, just because okay. they still don't quite comprehend what's going on. But okay. um, yeah, it's trying to just show like what are all the things going on inside the app. Um, I think that covers it. This to me is like a really crucial thing. Like mm -hmm. uh, there's there's plenty of tools that allow you to write. There yes. are tools that help you write. That's true. And, that's a good, that's a good distinction to make. And that's when that's actually when because like when I built Blur, I was like you're dumb. There's like Microsoft Word and Notepad and all these things have been around for eons. <laughs> yeah. Medium, medium, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And so like, who do you think you are to build this thing? That's, <laughs> yeah. that's where I noticed, like, I'm not trying to like necessarily build a better writing app. I'm actually trying yeah. to help the behavioral side of writing. So it's good. It's good. Cause then you can kind of form everything that you're building around that, you know, helping yeah. people. But yeah, it's good. And actually, yeah. And it's taking me down an interesting path. Maybe we'll, we can talk about mm -hmm. kind of like where I'm, where I think I'm going with Blurt, but um, yeah. yeah. So it's not necessarily like, now I'm kind of realizing some of the hurdles of like, I mean, yeah, half, half of the horror of building Blurt was like just getting the editor to look good. And like, there was a lot yeah. of effort going into that, but that's yeah. actually not something that people, while they like the interface and stuff, there's like, that's not necessarily like what makes Blurt so, so valuable. So yeah. anyways, um, so yeah, distraction free. I have this really like, you know, when you're writing, it's nice to just cut. So like it like hides the interface. I'll show that in a sure. second. Um, actually the whole reason blurred exists is because of this blur feature, mm -hmm. um, where, where you can blur your writing and not, I've been told, you know, some people don't use this. Some people hate it actually. Like, mm -hmm. it's just like, I would never use that, but some people love it. So yeah. it's like this, 
way to prevent yourself from self editing. Um, so it blurs as you type and you just can like blurt out your thoughts. And so does that mean you can just get stuff written uh, without kind of going over it at that moment? So then you can write it all in one chunk and then edit it at a later date. Is that correct? Yep, that's correct. Yeah. And so and I'll show there's actually like what I call writing sessions. So together, mm -hmm. those two things actually work well. So you say like, I want to write for t like two minutes or 300 words and then you blur it and you just like get it all down. Because um, it was actually really funny. I saw a quote today actually it was saying it's a lot easier to edit a page with garbage than it is a page with nothing on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, makes yeah. sense. <laughs> like you got to you got to get things down. So True. Uh, saves to the cloud all the time. Mm -hmm. I've added dark mode, and then we've got like just yeah and all the other little features. From, from, from what I saw, the launch went well. Is that is that good? Is that is that accurate? Does it does it feel like it went well to you? Yeah. So I am incredibly blessed and fortunate that it was so well received. Mm -hmm. I don't know a hundred percent why I'm like kind of great kind of grateful i know ryan hoover gave me some like uh acknowledgement like you know, i mean i know he does that occasionally with other things but i feel mm. like that helped in some way like i don't know yeah. um and i but it's, it's got to be good for him to do that right so i mean he has to yeah write, so. yeah i felt very fortunate for that and then yeah i just i guess the design people love writing and it was kind of a new thing and yeah uh, also, Justin Jackson, I mean, like, super appreciative. Like, I know he still uses it to this day, which is kind of cool. So Excellent. something to blur, right? There's unique features in it. Oh, um, nice. So, yeah, I, I don't, I couldn't tell you how it happened, but I'm grateful that it did. That's great. I'm happy to hear that. Is there, um, in regards to the functionality of Blurt, um, can we go under the hood? Is there something that you can sure. show off to how sure. things work at a high level? Sure. So... Yeah, so let's just open that up. So yeah. it's a, it's like there's a front end and a back end. So like sorry, I, I, sorry. First of all, yep. first of all, what the question everyone wants to know: what's the stack? What does it run on? Right. So uh, the front end is a React app, and yep. it's using Redux um, as kind of like the data layer for the React app. Right. With React Router, it's actually a Create React app. So. Got it. Um, yeah, and I. It's kind of dumb of me. I've actually paused it, but I was actually rewriting Blurt as a Next.js app because um, I've been learning more about it and love Next.js. But anyways, um, Create React app is great for like helping you get up and running. But now that I've kind of like come a long ways from there, I want to get away from it. Um, right. Okay. So anyways, it's a Create React app, but part of the problem is server-side rendering. So mm -hmm. I had to build like a server renderer so I could do like OG tags, for example. So when you um, share your blurt draft or something, it's not server side rendered. So mm -hmm. I had to like put, put this like server layer um, and that's just like an express app. Got it. And that's, that's the front end side of things. Yeah. And then, and then the back end is, um, I'm using what's called happy JS. Actually, we can look at the package here. You see all the crazy libraries I'm using. <laughs> okay. Um, it's happy JS with a Mongo DB. I yeah. use Mongoose as like the ORM. So, yeah. Uh, um, and yeah, I, and then it's like a node mon just running. So, uh, yeah. And happy JS is basically like express. I don't know why I picked it at the time. Okay. Express, I used express on other projects, but for whatever reason, that's what I picked and I'm stuck with it because okay. you know, once you build it, <laughs> Uh, you have it for a while. So that's kind of the stack, I guess. What else am I missing there? Um, yeah, that's it. So okay, great. And, it, and then from like a system perspective, it's all running on uh, DigitalOcean. Yep. Um, actually, I have iTerm up here. So yeah, uh, this is, I'm SSH into the box. Mm -hmm. And I run Doku. I don't know if you're familiar. I am, yeah. Um, so it's Dockerized, right? Yep. And like, that changed my life. Like when I got, I mean, Heroku is awesome, mm -hmm. um, but it's so cool to be able to like just run it yourself on your own databases. Um, it's just having that, level of, having that level of control, right? Yep, level of control. Yeah. So yeah. on the on the blurt box, I got apps. This 
I think that's the command. Yeah. And then I actually have my personal website on here too. So um, cool. and th my database is on here also. So that's, that's the only one. Yep. And then I run backups of like the database um, on here also and um, snapshots and all that stuff. So yeah. So you run, you run those backups yourself, right? Because there was this interesting but slightly tragic case where, some, where they had a uh, hardware outage and uh, someone lost their, someone, well, they just lost their instance. They just lost their stuff and yeah. they hadn't backed themselves up. And I think in the terms and conditions, it does say that you are, because it's, it's your, you're on your own and managing it. So you have to manage the stuff yourself. You have to back things up. Yep. So there was, it's no, terrifying. There was it's nothing terrifying. they could do. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah. So very early days of Blurt. This is actually when I realized, oh, wow, I actually, like, Blurt's an asset in some sense. Like, there's some yeah. value in it. Now, I mean, because people are trusting Blurt, me, to take their thoughts and put yeah. them somewhere. So they Isn't it crazy when you start make that, making that switch? It's like, because I, I don't know how it was for you. You're just kind of just building your thing, da, 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 da. And then people start using it. And then it dawns on you. It's like, oh, shit. Uh, right. People are relying on you to put their <laughs> stuff on us. So yeah. it's, it's kind of scary and cool at the same time, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. And that's when I started being, yeah. And I think Ethan talked about this too. Like that's when you start facing other problems you didn't know you even had. Like, yes. like and now I got to build this thing I didn't even know I needed kind of yeah. thing. So you, yeah. so you spend a lot of time like working on features, like backend stuff is not cool to share on Twitter, right? Like nobody, yeah. I mean, us as geeks love hearing like how you increase some performance or something, but yeah. there's no, I don't know. Anyways, you spend a lot of time doing that kind of stuff. Yeah, a lot right? of time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and then, oh, I guess one of the cool thing I use on, uh, it's Node.js, uh, mm -hmm. and I'm obviously, uh, and I use um, Bool is like a uh, queue process mm -hmm. with Redis. Okay. So that's that's used for running like async, kind of like crons or things uh, yeah. in Node.js. So I can like email somebody when it's time for them to write for the day, like an email reminder. Okay. Um, I also like, um, I have an, an open page for Blur that like shows stats of like, you know, uh, the MRR and uh -huh. that's constantly like crunching numbers asynchronously, for example. So um, that's Great. something else happened on the back end. So yeah, that's kind of the stack. Um, okay. I guess I kind of show how it's like structured. There's like the React UI is uh -huh. application front end. Um, and I use the containers and components um, abstraction, if you will, where like containers are kind of the views of the applications, so, like basically the URLs. So like the yep. open page, the login yep. page, yep. your home page or whatever. Um, and then components, you can see these are all like custom components I've written. Some have like the blur editor, for example, uh, where's that at? Why am I drawing a blank here? Am I composer? Blurt composer. I don't know what's the editor, but like it's got its <laughs> sub components in it, for example. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. And then, um, and then there's a store for all the data, your reducers to help like process all that data. Uh -huh. um, I'm, that's why I like Next.js. I'm ready to get away from it and use like GraphQL hooks like with Apollo because mm -hmm. then you don't have to do all this like crazy boilerplate uh, for reducers and redux because it's kind of a nightmare like anytime you want to add some new data model to your yeah. application you're like having to write all this code and it's kind of a nightmare yeah. um, sag sagas are really nice they're like a thing that I learned about uh, to help with reducers and like the actions um, that are like kind of a godsend for reducers. So I use mm -hmm. them a lot also, but basically anytime you're adding like a new data model to your whole reducer state, you have to like write like so much code. So that's why I wanted to get away from it because it just made like iteration on new features a lot slower. Um, but yeah, so we can look at, for example, let's see here, like what would be a cool one, uh, library. Yeah, so I think, yeah, library is this page here. So when you're logged into Blurt, um, yeah. when you first 
when you get onboarded, it asks you to create what are called writing efforts. Uh -huh. And a writing effort is just like a collect, like it is what it is. It's a collection of like some topic or maybe it's just a journal. Like this is my, I only have one for myself. It's daily contemplations. Uh -huh. um, you set a writing goal. Um, it kind of tells you like how many hours and you, you can pick which days of the week you want to write okay. and how many wor words you want to write. So like I want to write 350 words at least every weekday. So I obviously yeah. missed some days, days here, um, but I wrote today and I'm on a one day streak. Got it. Um, so I use uh, the way I kind of like set up my containers. I love um, style components. Like yep. my change my life uh like just it kind of reminds me of like when you're doing like mobile development how like your like all your ui code is just in one place yeah. so i don't like doing like i love doing the css in the doc and i i do i don't know if this is very common i haven't seen this i know a lot of people just like create a style component for each like ui widget and thing but i do a wrapper around my whole react component uh -huh. And then I just give class names to any of the things inside cool. that. Yeah. And then just style it all from there. So that's kind of mm -hmm. my workflow. And usually I'll open up like another you know, uh, window and edit the UI. Yeah. As I'm working on the components. Um, also, I love, I've started using hooks a lot. And I mm -hmm. built this before hook, React hooks were around. So it's kind of painful to like look at some of these massive <laughs> Just a quick word, maybe for people that don't know what hooks are. Yeah, uh, it's a new paradigm, if you will, for uh, React, so that you don't have to. They're kind of dangerous in some sense because they do a lot of magic. So okay. when you build it, it makes it so you don't have to write a lot of this um, code. That's like when this component mounts, do this. Yeah. yeah. Update this. And the other thing is it makes it all functional. So like right now, this component will mount block of code is uh -huh. tied to this container. Yeah. Where, and two, like some of the logic that's in this component will mount is used in say, did update. So uh -huh. what, what hooks allow you to do is kind of like create functions that can then be reused elsewhere. So like, for example, if you want to do like, uh, if you want every component to be able to like know when the window um, resizes, you can write this function and then give that to every component. Yeah. Right now, with, with the old way, you had to like write that unique to each component. So yeah. anyways, and it, it does a lot more than that, but okay. that's, kind of, that's the beauty of them. So anyways, this is kind of like the older book here, but um, gets the job done. Cool. Um, and then, yeah, and then I import all my components. I've built some like, uh, like higher order containers or what you call them HOCs for like analytics and uh, Google analytics and things. So nice. Um, yeah. Excellent. That's thanks thanks yeah. for that. Um, is there something that you can go into um, something during the development of blurt that you found particularly challenging and that you overcame? doesn't matter if it's small or big or. Yeah. Oh, man, it's tough. I mean, there's a lot of things. Um, I think, like, whew, I'm trying to think. Some of it has been just like banging my head with um, somebody else's uh, thing. So, like, I use DraftJS, which is okay. like an open source project uh -huh. uh, that Facebook, I think, is behind. <laughs> That's essentially the editor for Blurt. Okay. Um, but, like, having to. And they've like people, it has plugins um, okay. that you can build. So some of the UI elements or like the text highlighting that I do is using uh, drafts uh, library, but mm -hmm. I don't know their library very well. Right. Got it. So you, you spend a lot of time like in their docs, mm -hmm. trying to reverse engineer or finding bugs. And then you realize like you can't use their NPM module because it has some bug or error. So then you have to like, basically export that as your own module yeah. and yeah. rebuild it for yourself. So those are some of the headaches. I mean, like that's like where the rubber meets the road where you're actually like creating new uh, features that don't exist and you're trying yeah. to like wrap your head around it. That's where like, I, I guess I spent a lot of time uh, for blur. Um, but, but, but then you got there in the end, of course. Yeah, exactly. And so 
half of it is just like that's the developer way i mean i'm a grunt when it comes to that stuff it's just yeah. like you know, hammering through it and no one's there to help you so you just kind of go to forums obviously yeah. living in stack overflow and just uh -huh. googling the crap crap out of stuff of course i think um it's massively kind of uh satisfying to to have this big hurdle of course not at the time not particularly satisfying but then <laughs> <laughs> when you overcome it just the, just the feeling is just great so I yeah and i think i think half of it too for like makers is like sharing in that journey a little bit <laughs> like course. you all know like the effort that can sometimes go into something and yeah and really I've, I've found people massively supportive um, yeah I don't know how the experience has been for you but people have been really helpful yeah yeah it's cool but yeah. i feel like for everybody that's kind of the draw too of like coding and development like there's uh -huh. like this challenge to pull it all together uh -huh. um and to make it look so simple or easy to use um, simple is difficult so creating something that looks simple and operates simply and that it has a lot of function in within that simplicity is is, is yeah diff is difficult so i definitely yeah. appreciate the work that goes behind that for sure yeah yeah i uh yeah one time it's a whole other story but uh i had I like, I call it simplexity, like simple and complex. So I always oh, thought that would be like nice. a, a cool com company or name. So I have the domain owned, but I haven't used it for anything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Um, is there something you can share um, before we close out? Um, what's next for Blurt? Um, whether it's ah. a feature, direction? Yeah, so uh, admittedly, I don't feel like I've given Blurt the attention it needs in the last like, few months I've been learning more about like freelancing and consulting. So uh -huh. I've been like, uh, partially some of that's like a parachute to help like have an income while I'm like doing the maker thing. I hear that. Um, yep. So, um, it's taken up some time, which is great. Uh, cause I'm working on some awesome things also and learning a lot through that process, just like entrepreneurially. Um, but people are still using blurt. So I get a lot of feedback and the great thing is, is like the feature set I've built is, um, like it works great for what it does today. So some of it is just more like marketing and traction, like working yeah. to get blurt out in front of more people. Um, but I think the most interesting thing was this last week, I actually had a blurt user via drift, which is also mm -hmm. by the way, an amazingly powerful, super cool. Uh, I know there's like intercom and all these other things, but yeah. I love drift. I wouldn't I have, be anywhere without it. Yeah. Yeah. I've only have experience with intercom so far, which has been great. Um, I've never used Drift before, but I'm guessing it's similar. Yeah, it's, I'm, yeah, just essentially that chat widget on your website is so mm. hugely powerful. Um, mm -hmm. And so when you go to your settings and you cancel your account and blurt, I send up a little thing. It's like, hey, if you don't mind, let me know why you're quitting. So mm -hmm. I make it better. And somebody was saying, well, I write in Notion all the time. So okay. I was like, then we ended up talking for like, I don't know, 20 minutes in this chat. And oh. We both we both basically realized like man it would be really cool if Blurt was in Notion. So oh, yeah okay. Now Notion doesn't have like plugins at least from a developer perspective, but part of me is curious if I can like build a Chrome extension or mm. somehow somehow abstract the things that make Blurt so great like this dashboard cool. of like writing efforts, um, this progress bar when you're writing. Yeah. Uh, some of the smart edit features, kind of like what Grammarly does. Uh -huh. um, I'm curious <laughs> if maybe I'm, I might be able to do something like that. So I feel like that might be where I'm headed. Um, okay, that sounds interesting. Yeah. I'll, I'll definitely, um, I mean, we follow each other around everywhere anyway, right? So I'll definitely be interested in seeing where, that, where you go with that, where you take it. Cool, yeah, and I know, yeah, so yeah, definitely everybody use this thing. Uh, tell me what doesn't work for you, what does work, same with you, Andrew. Um, and I, I wanna make it like a truly useful tool. So it's great learning these things from people because I know we all like wanna write more, we aspire to write more, so some of us don't. So like what things do you need, what's missing from Blurt to help make that a little better for you? Well, I think you're off to a great start. Things are looking great so far. And um, that's, yeah, we'll call it there. And, um, Thanks for coming on this call. Thanks for being part of the show, um, sharing a part of your process, sharing part of what Blurt is, and yeah, appreciate you, Corey. Absolutely, yeah. I'm excited about uh, what you're doing, and I look forward to like watching more of these with other people, learning from everybody else too. Okay, sounds great. All right. Um, see you around. All right. Bye. -bye.
And that's it. Let me know in the comments who you'd like to see featured next. Bye for now.